Hello, here we are with video two of uh, rigging with advanced skeleton, a free tool for, uh, for rigging that I've used for years. Um, so let's get to it. So last time we pre prepped the model, um, got it all symmetrical and working, cleaned it up through the um, advanced skeleton cleaner tool. So what you do is you open a brand new scene. You, we've saved out the model um, uh, as, as a clean model before. What we've got to do is we've got to reference in the model. So um, here we click on reference or you can go up to file reference and then um, it's only showing um, MB files here. So if you go to my scenes, it will show everything at .ma and, and .mb and simply reference in the file, in she'll come. <coughs> For anyone that doesn't know what references in, referencing in is, um, as opposed to importing, <coughs> um, it, it's quite important. I'll, I'll try and give um, a quick um, explanation here, actually. So if we have our model, beautiful model. Um, so this is the model that we made and cleaned. Now we want to bring this um, into our, our Maya file for rigging, which is what we're doing now. So we're bringing it in for the joint placement. So if we create a new Maya file and we just simply <coughs> imported it in, um, the model would live <coughs> inside the Maya file. Um, you might be thinking, oh, well, that's fine, but <coughs> there's a problem here. So it, we're rigging away, we finish the rig, um, and then we're ready to use it. So then we use this rig in, you know, three, four, five, a hundred different uh, different Maya files. We're doing some animation, we're animating some scenes, all is good, and then um, you or the client comes back and says, I want to change the character. I want to put um, some different hair. I want to put a coat on or something. Um, then you are in, um, in a bad situation because then how the heck are you going to update five, 10, 100, 200 different animation scene files? So this is where referencing comes in. If we, um, if we have our model, this time what we're going to do is we create, um, create a new Maya file like we have done. And instead of importing the model in, we do what's called referencing, which is what we've done. So the model then gets referenced in. It looks exactly the same, but it's different. The model doesn't exist in the Maya file. It stays outside. It lives here in its own Maya file. So the beauty of this is that now, um, you know, we finish the rig, we go and use it in lots of different scene files. Comes back, we need to make the change. Oh, we want to put big shoes, <laughs> a big belt and a watch on the character. Um, we then do that, all that work back in the model file and it updates through the system in all the different files. So we only have to update the model once. That's what referencing is. I'll do a video on this um, later to explain it properly. Uh, I mean, it's also really important that you never import um, a rig into a my file to animate. You always reference in case you have to change any animation. But you are left with a problem then. You've got a nested uh, reference, which is which is a reference in a reference in a my file. Um, so Advanced Skeleton has a clever little publish button which it publishes the rig file which but by it, it does actually import the model into the rig file but you do keep the original so you do you will end up with three files really so one you'll have the model two you'll have the rig file with the model referenced in then you'll have a published rig number three the final published sorry it's a bit hard writing with this brush published rig which is this imported in into here but then anytime you can make a change to it to the model republish and then all the references will be updated you can see i hope you can see the advantage of this sorry over this um crappy drawing but um it, it really is brilliant imagine if you've got like a uh, hundred two hundred scenes your director your client wants to change some animation um, you would be you, you'd be screwed basically so referencing is really important always referencing your model um, or, or, or definitely the rig in to do the animation hope that helps uh, right let's get back to it so here we are back in Maya we have referenced in the character now advanced scale and automatically puts 
um, your, your model on a, on a layer. You can turn it on and off and it sets it to template which is hitting the little T here. So R T is for template, R is for reference, meaning mean you cannot select it um, for you to put your your joint placement in. Now I like to work in real world scale, so I've modeled this <coughs> character as a young as a young girl anyway. So um, let's we, we finish with the pre section now, so now we can bring we can start to bring in a skeleton and fit it to our character. You've got um, a few different presets here. Um, you've got the biped, biped bendy, which is like all bendy limbs and lots of different animals and things like this. I'm just going to stick with the normal, um, the, the normal biped for sort of you know standard film, feature film, whatever. It's a good quality rig. And you press import, and in comes um, the rig. You've got to make sure you've got um, uh, joints showing and curves, otherwise you won't see it. Um, <clears throat> So it comes it comes in quite small, but like I say, I like to work in real world scale. So you get this um, you, you get this um, base selection, and as you can see, it's got lots of labels: toe end, toes, um, heel, um, hit, uh, root, chest. So what you want to do first of all is scale it up, and we just start fitting it into our character. So I'm going to just um, Scaler up. I'm going to go. It's sometimes good to go into a four view or, or, or keep swip, swapping between the front. The grid gets in the way, but here, so you can click here to 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 get rid of it. I'm going to carry on scaling it up until I get the chest about in the middle. We do want the root a bit lower, um, but we can move things around in a minute. It's just it's just sort of general um, general placement for the moment. So I'm going to go up to um, uh, my move tool. So you can move. Um, move anything around um, um, in, in the viewport. It's good to swap between the um, um, three quarters side and front to get these in position. So you want, um, you, you, you'll sort of get used to where placements are. The clavicle should always sort of go um, sort of in line with the neck really because you've got the shoulder, then the clavicle and they, they when you're animating they do both um, they do both sort of bend together this way. You never ever get just a rig with just a shoulder it would just collapse the top um, so I'm going to work my way through and just position some of these now um, if I go into perspective view you, um, I think most of you may know but I'll just quickly show you you can move in um, uh, world space I'll, I'll show you here you can move in um, oh, you can't move this but um, if I want to move a joint um, at the moment if I hold down the W key and press I'm in world space so what that means is it's moving in, in relation to exactly the world, X, Y, and Z, it'll move back, it'll move up, it'll move uh, this way, X, Y, and Z. If I change to um, object mode, it will move down um, in the direction of the joints going, see? So if I move it back to world, it moves, and I move it this way, it's exactly in world relations. And, and you will end up swapping between the two. So um, I have a bit of a preference here myself. Um, I know this this see-through uh, the, 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 um, <coughs> um, wireframe is is quite good. Some people might like it, but I actually prefer to see uh, uh, my mesh and and use X-ray joints. Now, if you click here, you can't see your joints anymore. So there's a little button up here that gives you um, X-ray joints, so you see all your joints um, 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 come in, and you can switch between the two. Um, so I'm just going to I'd like to switch between the two. So I'm just going to start generally placing this. So as you can see, um, we need to move this back. Um, the hand goes back. Um, what, what you want here is I, I, I also tend to rotate into places. What you what you don't want to do is you don't ever want to move this up and down like this. You want to try and keep um, lines of rotation still. So I'm quite used to sort of sometimes rotating into place as well. Um, and then from the top view, you know, you can you can just get this into place. You might want to put wireframe on, uh, a, a wireframe on shaded mode, so you can see the actual thi um, things there. I'm going to come back to the fingers in a minute. Um, um, let's see what we've got here. I'm going to go to a side view. Again, I'm going to press um, X-ray joints. Um, what I'm going to do is the clothes are getting in my way here, so I'm going. When we did the cleanup, you, I lost all my layers, so I'm going to do a bit of a cleanup and let's just let's just get this file ready so that um, we can hide things, get things out of the way. 
So I'm going to move um, the dress and the buttons to its own layer. Layer, um, create layer from selected. And it'll automatically add those and you can hide them. Or if you haven't selected it, you can simply right click, add selected objects. Um, T-shirt again, create layer from selected. T-shirt, hide that. I'm going to put the hair on as well. Um, I'm, I'm going to um, put the hair all on its own layer. I'm just going to grab the whole, the whole hair group in one go, um, including the hair bands. Create layer from selected. We'll just call it. We'll just call it hair, and hide that. It just makes things um, easy to set up. We're okay with the shoes as they are um, at the moment. So, so let's get back to where we were, a side view. I'm gonna hide the grid. What we're gonna do now is we can, um, if, if, you, if you just move, we, we are just moving everything into place. Um, if I wanna move the knee, it's gonna move the foot as well. So what we're gonna do from here is you're gonna press the D key. I think the insert key works just as well as well. Um, and you can go back to wireframe if you want. To, and when you move the D, hit the D key, you're positioning just the one single joint. Again, I'm working in in um, local rotation mode. Um, we want to get the ankle um, up into the position of the ankle where it's going to rotate. I'm going to hit the D key again because I want to move um, um, this a little bit, a little bit forward. Hit the D key again. I want the toes up. I'm just going to move into the front. Sometimes I jump jump around to perfect things. You can work your way up if you want, or you can um, um, you can just you know work your way up, or just jump from views like me. I'm a bit sporadic like that. So I'm going to go to the front view and let's position the whole of the leg. Let's get this right. I'm going to go into world mode because if I did it on object mode, it, you know it, I want to move it straight out at right angle. I'm going to move it out. Sometimes I do need to rotate this in. I don't, whatever you do, don't ever get the foot and do this. You'll break, the, you'll, you'll, you'll break this line and the pole vectors, the knee controls will just be way off. Always rotate into place. So get the hip roughly correct where I want it. And then <clears throat> rotate into place. I'm gonna start positioning the toes. I'm going to make sure I'm in object space, move it out, big toe. You can see I've got toes inside this model, but for this it's going to be um, fully uh, trainers on. This is the edge for the for the, for the the foot rock. Um, again, I'm going to go back to shaded, I prefer that. Um, the heel looks good where it is, I'm happy with that. Um, let's move our way up. Now we're going to have to move everything forward, definitely. I, I, it, it, this is too far back at the moment. So I'm going to go into world space because I don't want to be moving up. And I'm going to hit my uh, D key. Because I've positioned my legs, I don't. If, if, I, if I didn't have it in the D key, you will see that everything gets moved out of place. So just hit the D key, we can move where we want. And I definitely want my hips to come down. The root's going to have to go across. You generally want... A sort of S curve in the shape of your shape of your spine. I mean, you, your model might be shaped differently. You don't want it right in the middle. I prefer to have it a little bit at the back. That's the way the spine bends. Um, and then you're going to get the chest. Move that forward as well. And then you want kind of like even spaces in between the chest. I mean, I mean, it doesn't have to be exact, but you, you'll, you'll, the more practice you'll, you'll get there. No, nothing is set in stone anyway. So the neck here should be at the base of the neck. Then I'm going to hit the D key again because I want to move all of these up in one go. So this should be at, this one here should be at the base of the head. See the crease of the head here? And this one should go right up above. In fact, it should even go above the hair. So just in case, let's, let's turn our hair back on and just move it right up at there and then hide the hair again. I'm going to move the jaw right forward. We are actually going to use the advanced skeleton facial rig setup anyway, so it does override the jaw, but it's good to have it in the in the 
in the right place anyway. Hit the D key again. So this is where the jaw pivots. You can you can imagine um, as the jaw um, as as this rotates this way. That's where the jaw will open. This is the eye joint. I'm going to import the eyes back in in a second. And we'll just move this over here and get the end one just poking out because the the the, the end one doesn't matter. It's, it uses this to rotate the eye wherever you're going to go. Um, that's okay for there. Okay, that's looking okay from the side. I'll now go into a front view again. Check my things. Um, And I think the root should be um, should be lower. Generally, should be just above the hips, maybe around the belly button area. And sometimes, it, you know, it, it really depends on the topology of your character. And by the topology, I mean um, the way the polygons flow. So if I turn this back on, this is the way the polygons flow. You generally have more polygons where the knee bends. Um, but uh, you know, this character is short, stumpy, and a bit, you know, sort of cute sort of looking character so it's going to be different anyway um, clavicles looking good shoulder sometimes I do come back and change this so it depends on the deformation so if you can imagine if this was here and it rotated here the um, the arm when it's folded would be into the body so you don't want that when it's folded you want the arm to be sort of you know next to it really so you could even afford to move that out a bit more again um, so Again, this takes a bit of trial and error. It depends when you skin the character, um, and, and, and on preferences as well. The elbow is tucked in in the elbow crease. That looks good. Okay, it's not looking too bad. Right, let's go up. My right, arm now. Let's do a quick view in the top view. Sometimes it's a bit hard to see in the top view, especially when you are a character with a huge bulbous head like this. Um, okay, so I'm going to move this forward a bit. I'm Going to rotate. It's always good to have a little rotation in the joint. If if this it, um, it, uh, a little angle. If this angle was the other way, the arm would flip backwards. So that's really important. Okay, let's move on to get the um, the hand done. So the wrist wants to be where exactly it's going to rotate in the wrist. If it's too far back, you'll get a really bumpy. If I if I rotate this, can you imagine the hand would rotate from there? wouldn't look good. So the fingers, um, here we go, so the, the thumb, just, just just drag that into position here then here for the first off and then rotate around and then they'll start moving these out in, in object mode and local rotation axis mode um, and then again take a bit of trial and error to put these into place, doesn't take too long. I will um, uh, move these out one rotate in a little bit just get them into general position in first so this first is for the this first metacarpal will be on the um, on, on the rotation knuckle uh, let's move this out this one here so I've got quite this it makes it a bit difficult because I've got quite fat chubby little fingers here actually um, but it shouldn't be a problem this here is where um, the uh, the 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 cup of the hand will go. This it's got a sort of cupping motion you can use. I'm going to hit the D key because I don't want to lose what I've done there. And what I'm going to do is the joints are a little, little bit big here, so in advanced skeleton you can also obviously go up to the tra traditional um, rigging menu and go skeleton and change the joint size up here. But um, advanced skeleton is, is linked up; it has it all here, so you can go up and shrink things down. So if you make things a little bit smaller for these type of positionings. Um, it makes it a bit easy to position things. So I'm going to now go in a, a little bit tighter and um, I'm going to turn on a wireframe because I want to get these in um, to the knuckles. So that bend should be on that one, that bend should be on that knuckle and then this tip should over overlap. Knuckle, knuckle, overlap. So that knuckle, this one here, that one go back a bit, gone too far. And then we'll position this back, rotate it in again. And drag this one out. It's good that they just 
overlap off the end of it. <clears throat> Rotate this into place a little bit more. Just have to keep perfecting it really. Um, there we go. Now let's move the fingers up. So you can move them all at the same time if you want. You know what you're doing here. So one, um, one, two, three, four. They all need to come up. So you can just you you can just move them up. Depends on how your hands modelled. And then um, the fingers are in a little bit different positions. They're not all dead flat. That would look like a some sort of shovel. So I'm now going to go to the side view. I'm going to rotate this up a bit. I'll turn off wireframe. So I'm always flicking through different modes, whatever sort of you know helps me see better. I like to have a little bit of rotation. So if you highlight the one you're on, it makes it a bit easier to see as well. So that needs to come down a bit. Let's highlight this one. That's looking good. Sometimes your fingers might be angled a bit as well, so you, you can actually rotate these, but what you want to do is make sure, obviously, the Y plane, if you do this, then when the finger rotates, it will rotate in. At the moment, let me just select all the joints just to show you an example of, of a finger curl. When you select these uh, and rotate them, this is the motion we're going to get. So Advanced Skeleton is very clever. It does, it does um, work out... Um, a lot of the rotations, but it's best to get these things things right, otherwise things won't be rotating in the right way. See there, I might actually just, because my mine's modelled a bit more um, steeply there, I might change that around a bit. Now, let me just turn this back on so I can see where the knuckle is for this one, and move it out. That's a bit too much. And we'll just rotate this in a bit now. This one, in a bit. Okay. It's not too bad. It doesn't take too long at all. In fact, you know, once you, I'm doing this quite slow. Once you, once you get used to it, you can really sort of do this quite fast. You, you know, you could probably do this in in five minutes. Um, oh, don't know what's happened there. Let's just bring that one up. Just going to double check the knee. Let's have a look in the front. Do you want the knee to bend in the right place? Yeah, it looks pretty good. Just a little bit lower. Okay, that looks pretty good. So what we're going to do now is do um, uh, get the eyes in the in, um, imported. And it's going to be line up with the eye here. Um, Make sure you keep saving your work, by the way. So I always like to um, save version numbers. So I will, uh, I've got a new folder, character rigs, Isabella. This will be is a, Isabella underscore rig underscore V01. I like to save everything in stages because then it's easier to go back. Um, it, it's, it's really important. Okay, let me turn this off, shaded. I'm going to bring in my eyes now because uh, if you remember, I had different sort of eyes that that, that had sort of um, some Maya nodes and stuff on them for coloring and things, which got stripped out when I did the OBJ. So um, I'm going to bring them in now. For um, I'm just going to Im import them in, um, and I saved them here. And obviously, I've kept the same scale, so everything is is fitting nicely. I've just gone to shaded mode, just wait for the textures to kick in. Here they come. So let's get the eye joint in place. This has to be right from the side um, and the front. Let's go to side view. And this time I'm going to hide everything. Everything is still on that high res layer anyway. So. I'm going to go to here and we're going to get it 
in the center. And you need to do that from the, um, uh, from the side and obviously the front. Now we want these, I'm, I'm going to give a little bit of a, 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 another tip now because um, most eyes, especially when I model them, I do rotate them off a bit because otherwise you get this funny um, you know, forward staring sort of owl look. So these eyes actually are rotated off so it's, it's quite hard to find the exact center. So what you can do here is we can use um, one of the, um, a, little, a, a little, little trick to find the center. Um, I've already got the, uh, the center of the pivot. If you haven't got this, if your if your pivot point isn't the center, just got to modify center pivot, and it'll appear there. Okay, I'm going to just go into wireframe for this. So what we want to do here is is now that make sure your pivot is in the center. You can go up to um, display, um, transform display, local rotation axis, and what that's given us is a tiny little little node in here and that is exactly in the center so that's brilliant that's exactly what we, what we want because look see there are, I was off we want to want to get it bang on really for to, to obviously to get the eyes to rotate properly so I'm going to select the joint again zoom in and now as you can see we need it dead on and not just from this, not just from the side. We want to see that in the front as well. And there's our little gizmo that we will be brought up. So let's bring it across. And there we go. You could do that in the top as well if you want. But now that's exactly in the centre. That's exactly what we wanted for the eyes. There we go. Let's bring back, bring back the model. Go into shaded view. I'm going to um, just bring up the hair. Just okay. It looks pretty good. <laughs> so what I want to do is I want to actually add some extra joints in. So advanced skeleton is brilliant at um, um, adding in custom joints um, for all sorts of things. I want to be able to um, control and, and, and animate um, her pigtails. So from here, let me just save this again. What we can do is we can create new joints coming off um, the the root head joint. Um, for this, I'm going to go into um, a front view. Turn off wireframe and shaded. So. What we're going to do is it's got this little button. Obviously, this is just access, accessing the, the commands up here for you, but it is all, all kept for us in here. So we're going to create our own little our own little joint system now. I'm just going to... Um, ev everything will get mirrored. You, you can set it to not mirrored, but it automatically gets mirrored for us, which is what we want for these pigtails. So I only want a few joints, so I'm going to say we want one by... Um, one by the head here. Um, here, 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 and I want one here. And that should give us a little joint chain. Let me just see what this looks like as we... Yeah, that should be quite nice. You can add more joints if you want as well. To get to get more deformation, I mean, what this will give you is this will give you a control at each point as well. So you'll get a control here, 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 and here. So I'm going to move this out here. Let's put this into wireframe mode. Right, we're going to selected mode. Obviously, um, it puts it exactly in line with the grid, so we need to move this back now. So let's move this back here. And from a top view, you can see that we're going to want to now rotate everything back. Here we go. 
go. That should work well. So then to connect it to the main rig, just um, highlight this end rig, highlight the main root rig, and press P for parent. That's P for parent. And now you can see it's joined to the rest of the rig. Might be good to name these rigs if you want to keep things clean. So let's go to our. Um, I'm, I'm hitting. I'm hovering over and hitting the F key to focus in, just like we would focus in on an area for the um, uh, of the uh, of a model or anything. So you've got joint one, joint two, and joint three. I mean, we can call this um, pigtail one, pigtail two. Pigtail three. Okay. Just giving it a one. So this looks pretty good. All the joints are in place. Um, you know, and we can always come back and amend this. You know, this is you know we, we can do what we want with this. Um, shoulders in a good place. Okay, I'm gonna save this. And I am going to now um, uh, run the rig. Um, I'm just going to show you actually um, an extra little tip that I mentioned about mirroring. Everything gets mirrored um, automatically, but you, if if you don't want it to, you can um, you can add an attribute here. So you've got um, uh, all these attributes that come up here. So you've got twisty, uh, bendy, in between. There's lots of different utilities here that are really good. So if I didn't, for example, maybe if I had just um, um, a ponytail, just just one ponytail, and I didn't want it flipped. What I would do is I would select the the, the first joint, not the, the root joint, um, the root of the of the pigtail. And, and if you watch over here, I would go. I want a no mirror attribute, and I click add, and it creates it here. And now, when it runs, when Advanced Get It and runs, it won't flip that, it won't mirror it, it'll just be on this side. That's obviously not what we want, so I'm just going to um, just going to um, undo that, if I can, if it lets me undo it. Yep. Okay. Um, brilliant. I think that's it. Let's run, let's run Build Advanced Get It. So we click the main button, click Build. It'll run through it, update the orientations. It's pretty quick. Here we go. There's the hit one made. There's my pole vectors appearing, and there, boom, build, build complete. And there's your, and there's the rig. It's not skinned or anything yet. Um, and the pigtail curves are very, are, are just massive. Um, but if I move this, here's the rig. Here's the knee controls. If we, if if we had hadn't, if we had um um put the knee off center, like I was saying, you hadn't kept anything straight line, these would be shooting off this way. This controls here. You've got your um, feet controls, which will pick it up. We're gonna over here. We'll go we'll go through some of this later as well. You've got your foot roll. But everything seems pretty much um, in place. Um, is there anything I've missed? So um, let's just check that we think this is bending in the right place. Yep. And um, you got the hip, hip moves, um, the head joint, the controls up here, which will enlarge later. Um, you've got, um, I don't use these for animation, but they're good to test these out. You've got your whole um, finger curls, um, crunches, uh, wrist looks like it's bending at a good place. Um, we're going to have to extend the curves of this out. Spine looks good. Um, the chest control is a bit hidden away. We'll get that out again. Um, let's try them both together. Yep. Okay, this looks good, guys. Um, in the next video, we'll 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 build a skin cage. We'll we'll we'll, we'll do a basic skin. We'll test the deformation, um, and we'll, we'll change the size of these controls. Um, before moving on to a face rig um, and we'll take it from there. I um, hope that was useful. I'll see you in video three. Thanks.